Okay, so we will discuss a few problems uh, related to uh, classical thermodynamics as well as classical statistical mechanics that we discussed so far. So, the first problem is calculate the final volume of one mole of an ideal gas initially at 273 Kelvin temperature and one atmospheric pressure. If it absorbs 1000 calorie of heat during a reversible expansion. The problem is the calculate the final volume of one mole of an ideal gas initially at 273 Kelvin temperature and one atmospheric pressure if it absorbs 1000 calorie of heat during a reversible expansion. So, so how to how to solve uh, this problem? Okay. So, rather we can say that okay, so this is reversible isothermal expansion if we consider. The problem is slightly modified now. The calculate the final volume of one mole of an ideal gas initially at 273 Kelvin temperature and water atmospheric pressure. If it absorbs 1000 calorie of heat during a reversible isothermal expansion. Okay, so, we have here how to solve this. So, we have ideal gas, ideal gas as well as isothermal process. Right. And we know for ideal gas, the internal energy depends only on temperature. So, so for isothermal process, du equals to 0 for an ideal gas. And from first law of thermodynamics, we know du is del q process is the reversible one del q reversible plus del w reversible. Since du is 0, so we can write del q reversible is nothing but minus del w reversible and this is P dv and we need to calculate q reversible. Q reversible is nothing but if we integrate it we get n r t is n r t and then l n v 2 by v 1, where v 2 is the uh, final volume and v 1 is the initial volume. So, what is the initial volume? So, initial volume v 1 so initial volume v 1 is n r t by p. So, it gives us v 1 is n is number of mole is 1 here, r is 0 0.082 in liter atmosphere unit and temperature is 273 and pressure is 1 atmosphere here. So, we get this this v 1 is in liter. Okay. So, we get 
the value of V1 here and we need to calculate V2. Okay. So, Q reversible again is 1000 here okay. and N is 1, R is 2 in calorie unit, temperature is 273, ln V2 and then V1, V1 the value we are getting here we need to substitute here. Okay. This V1 we need to substitute here and then we need to calculate V2. If we do it, we get approximately 140 liter. Okay, so, this is how you, you do it. Okay. So, first thing we need to do is we need to since we consider ideal gas here. So, an isothermal process du is 0, there is no change in internal energy for this process. And if we substitute du equals to 0, then we get del Q reversible is minus del W reversible and del W reversible we know P dV. So, if we substitute that we get minus P dV, we substitute that then we get P dV here. So, we get we know Q reversible is 1000 calorie and here R is 2 and the temperature is 273 Kelvin. Okay. Now, one thing you must be cautious here while putting or while using the value of R, you need to consider, we consider two, two different R values here, one is in liter atmosphere unit while calculating uh, uh, the initial volume and while calculating the final volume here from the first law of thermodynamics, we use the uh, unit of uh, R in calorie. Okay. So, this is a very simple problem, problem number 1. Next, we consider a little or slightly difficult problem. Okay. So, it says problem number 2 we discuss now for a certain reaction at constant pressure delta G is given as minus A plus B times T and ln T log of T, where A and B are, are constants and T is absolute temperature. And we need to calculate change in enthalpy or delta H. Okay. This is a very simple problem. We will use here Gibbs Helmholtz equation okay. because that relates uh, delta G and uh, delta H. Okay. Like we know here the given delta G is minus A plus B times T ln T or delta G by T is minus A by T plus B ln T now if we differentiate delta G by T with respect to temperature at constant pressure we get and right hand side is nothing but min minus delta H by T to the 2 and it gives us delta H is minus A minus B times T. Okay. This is a simple but very nice problem. Okay. So, delta G was given and you are when we were asked to calculate delta H. Since delta H related to del, delta G is related to delta H by Gibbs Helmholtz equation, we are applying Gibbs Helmholtz equation in this problem to calculate delta H from the expression of delta G by differentiating delta G by T with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Okay. So, we will uh, uh, do another simple problem. Problem number 3 is 1 mole of a gas obeying the equation of state P 
be p v min p times v minus b t equals to r t undergoes a change from the initial state t 1 v 1 to a final state t 2 v 2. What is the value of delta s that we need to calculate? Assume C v is x plus y times t plus z times t to the 2. Okay, so, here the problem says one mole of an of a gas obeying the equation of state. So, for the, for the gas equation of state is given P V times minus V equals to R T undergoes a change from the initial state T 1 V 1 to a final state T 2 V 2. What is the value of delta S or change in entropy we need to calculate. And here C V is not uh, C V is not independent of temperature rather C V is dependent on temperature. And C B the expression for X, the expression for C B is C B is X plus Y times T plus Z times T to the 2. Okay. So, we already discussed what would be the entropy change when both temperature and volume are changing. Okay. So, entropy change in terms of V and T. So, we know del Q reversible is T d s is C V d T minus uh, plus P d V. Right. So, we get d s is C V by T d T plus P by T d V. Okay. So, what is the value of P here? So, the equation of state is, so the gas equation of state is P times V minus B is at T. So, it gives P is at T by V minus B. So, now we will substitute the value of uh, C V and p into equation 1 and then we will do the integration. And if we do the integration, we get the change in entropy. So, we have d s equals to C b by t d t plus P by T times D V. Now, what do we do? We substitute the value of C V and P in this expression and we get D S is x plus y times t plus z times t to the 2 by t times d t and P is our R T by T times B minus B times D V. So, this is D S. Okay. So, if we do the integration and the value of S 1 and S 2 are the initial and the final entropy, we do the integration we get integration S 1 to S 2 d s equals to integration T 1 to T 2 x plus y t plus z t to the 2 y t times t t times d t plus at t by t times v minus b times d v and volume changes from b 1 to 
So if we do it, we get delta S is x ln t2 by t1 plus y t2 minus t1 plus z t to the 2 minus t1 to the 2 by 2 plus r ln v2 minus b by v1 minus b. So, this is the answer. So, if we now integrate it, so delta s is again uh, is 2, is 2 is function of t2 minus t2 and p2 minus s1, which is a function of t1 and p1. So, delta s is nothing but s2 minus s1. So, delta s is x ln t2 by t1 plus y times t2 minus t1 plus z t to the 2 minus t1 to the 2 by 2 plus r ln v2 minus b by v1 minus b. So, this was our uh, problem 3. Next, we will discuss another problem. Uh, one analytical problem, okay. So, it is uh, not numerical. So, that problem 4 is del C p by del p equals to minus t del 2 v by del t to the 2 d p. So, uh, this is analytical problem as I said. So, we will start with C p. Okay. How do we solve it? Okay, so, we know C p is del q by del t at constant pressure right? and this is nothing but del t del s by del t at constant pressure. Okay. So, del C p by del p is t del 2 s by del t to the 2 times uh, del t t del t sorry de, sorry del 2 s by del t del p right. So, this is uh, del C p by del p. Now, we need to prove del 2 s by del t del p equals to 2 minus of del 2 v by del t 2 at constant pressure. Okay. So, from Maxwell's relationship, from Maxwell's relation, we know del v by del t at constant pressure is nothing but minus del s by del p at constant temperature. So, it gives us del 2 v by del t 2 at constant pressure is minus of del 2 s by del t del p. So, we can prove that C p del C p by del p is nothing but minus t del 2 v by del t to the del t 2 at constant pressure. Very easy to prove only thing we need to remember Maxwell's relation. So, this is proved. So, the next problem is the we consider. So, this is problem number 5. This is very interesting problem. The volume of a system consisting of an ideal gas decreases at constant pressure so the volume of system consist consisting of an ideal gas decreases at constant pressure as a result 
the temperature of uh, 1.5 kg of water in the surroundings increases by 14.2 degrees Celsius. Calculate Q p for the system. And it is given that C p of water is 4.18 joule per gram per Kelvin. Okay. So, this is very interesting problem. It says the volume of a system consisting of an ideal gas decreases at constant pressure. As a result, the temperature of a 1.5 kg of water in the surrounding increases by 14.2 degree Celsius and we need to calculate heat change for the system and C p of water is given. Okay. How do you solve this problem? So, Q p system is nothing but minus Q p surroundings right? and or we write minus q p system is q p surroundings okay? and this is nothing but a m c p delta t. Right? So, we get q p system, so, m is the mass of water here. So, this is in gram unit and then c p of water is given times 4.18 joule per gram per Kelvin and delta T is also given. So, times 14.2 Kelvin. So, Q p system is nothing but minus of 89 we have a minus so we have minus Q p system. So, Q p is minus 89.034 kilo joule. Okay, so, this is the answer. Okay, so, how to do it? So, you have a system okay, and it, it has ideal gas. So, the volume of the system decreases okay. and as a result the temperature of water which is present in the surroundings increases. Okay by 14.2 degree Celsius and what is the mass of water? Mass of water is 15.4. Okay. So, heat is getting transferred from the system to the water present at the surroundings. That is the main uh, concept for this problem. Next, we consider uh, another simple problem. A typical resting person hits the surroundings at a rate of 100 watt or 1 watt is 1 joule per second. Estimate the entropy the person generates in the surroundings. in the course of 
of a day at 300 Kelvin temperature. So, this problem says a typical resting person heats the surroundings at a rate of about 100 watt. Okay. So, 1 watt is uh, 1 joule per second. Estimate the entropy the person generates in the surrounding in the course of a day at 300 Kelvin temperature. So, so the person is, is hits the surroundings. So, first the heat is getting transferred from the system, system is a person here, system to the surroundings. Okay. And how much heat it is transferring? 100 watts means 100 joule per second. Okay. So, what is the heat is transferred from the system to surroundings? So, Q, if we say Q, Q surroundings. And if we consider the process is uh, reversible one, this heat transfer process. So, you can write Q reversible surroundings is 100 joule per second. And in a day, we have Thirty-six hundred times twenty-four second. Okay, and what is temperature here? Temperature of the day is three hundred Kelvin. So the entropy change of the surroundings is hundred times three six zero zero times twenty-four by three hundred joule per. Kelvin. So, this is in joule unit skew reversible. Okay. So, we get delta A surroundings is 3 6 or 1200 times 24 joule per Kelvin. This is simple yet interesting problem. Okay. Next, we consider a problem which is very simple one. This is problem number 7. Suppose 5 moles of an ideal monatomic gas at an Initial temperature of two ninety eight Kelvin and pressure of ten atmosphere is expanded adiabatically. and reversibly until the pressure has decreased to one atmosphere pressure. Calculate the final volume final temperature the internal energy in an internal energy change the enthalpy change and the work done. Ok. 
Okay, so this is a textbook problem kind of. So suppose 5 moles of an ideal ammonium gas at an initial temperature of 298K and pressure of 10 atmosphere is expanded adiabatically and reversibly until the pressure has decreased to 1 atmosphere. We need to calculate the final volume, final temperature, the internal energy change, the enthalpy change and the work done. Okay. The problem is, 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 as I said, it is pretty straightforward one. Okay, so, what we need to do, what, what the, the information provided here are number of moles n is number of moles goes to 5, initial temperature. T1 is 298 Kelvin. Initial pressure P1 is 1 atmospheric pressure. Final pressure P2 or initial pressure is 10 atmospheric pressure and final pressure is 1 atmospheric pressure. We need to calculate and CV for monatomic gas for monatomic gas CV is 3 by 2 R, CP is for ideal monatomic gas, CP is 5 by 2 R. So, CP by CV, which we say gamma, is 5 by 3. And we need to calculate first fin final temperature T2 is what. So, these are the information we have. Okay. So, number of moles 5, initial temperature 298 Kelvin, initial pressure 10 atmospheric, 10 atmosphere, final pressure 1 atmosphere, and we need to calculate final temperature which is a which define as T2. This and we know the for monar ideal monatomic gas C V is 3 by 2 R, C P is 5 by 2 R and C P by C V which is say gamma, which is gamma and the value of gamma is 5 by 3. Okay. So and the process is adiabatic process and adiabatic reversible process. Okay. So the process, so this is an adiabatic reversible process. And we know for adiabatic reversible process P1 V1 to the gamma is P2 V2 to the gamma. And if we substitute the value of uh, V1, here we get P1 to the 1 minus gamma times T 1 to the gamma is P 2 to the 1 minus gamma and T 2 to the gamma. So, we get T 2 by T 1 to the gamma is P 1 by P 2 to the 1 minus gamma. And if we substitute all this uh, value, we get T2 is 118.76 Kelvin. So, this is the final temperature T2 we have calculated. So, once we get T2, we can easily calculate. We know final pressure, we know number of moles, we can easily calculate final volume. Okay. So, final temperature we obtained, we have obtained is 118.76 is Kelvin and V2 is nothing but NR T2 by P2. So, V2 we get 5 
r is 0 0.082 in liter atmosphere unit, T 2 we have just obtained 118.76 and P 2 is 1 atmosphere. Right. So, P 2 is 1 atmosphere and if we calculate this, we get V 2 is 48.69 liter. Now, next thing we need to calculate W delta U and delta H. Now, for adiabatic process, Q is 0, so delta U is W. Okay. So, and delta U is nothing but A n C V delta T. N is 5, C V is 3 by 2 times R, R if we substitute in joule unit, we, we can write R is 8.314 and delta t, t 2 minus t 1, so 118.76 minus 298. If we calculate delta u is minus 1176, 1176.51 joule and which is nothing but w. So, w is also minus 1176.51 joule. Okay. So, we got both W and delta U. Next, we need to calculate delta H. So, delta H is very easy to calculate. Delta H is A n C P, delta T. So, A n again 5, C P is 5 by 2 times R and delta T is T 2 minus T 1. So, if we substitute all these things, we get delta value of delta H is one eighteen thousand six hundred twenty seven point five two joules. So, this is very easy and uh, and a textbook problem. Okay, next we consider uh, uh, some. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh, calculate something uh, interesting next. So, next problem is again analytical problem. A certain system is found to have gives free energy given by where A and R are constants. we need to find the value of C p. So, okay, so, the problem says a certain system is found to have Gibbs free energy given by G which is a function of pressure and temperature is R t log of A p by R t to the 5 by 2 where A and R are constants and we need to calculate the value of C p. So, how do we how do we proceed? Okay. So, G, so we have G is R T L N A P plus 5 by 2 R T L N R T. Okay. So, we get G which is function of P and T. is R t ln A plus 
rt ln p plus 5 by 2 rt ln r and we know del g by del t at constant pressure is minus s okay that we discussed uh, in one of our class okay so this relationship okay so we have the value of g here now if we differentiate g with respect to t keeping pressure constant we get del g by del t at constant pressure the first term gives us r ln a the second term gives us r ln p the third term is 5 by 2 r ln r and the last term gives us 5 by 2 r ln t plus 5 by 2 times r t times 1 by t. So, if we solve it, we get del g by del t at constant pressure is r ln a p plus 5 by 2 r ln r t plus 5 by 2 r. So, we get s value of s. So, s is minus r ln a p minus 5 by 2. Oh, okay. So, there is a uh, uh, mistake here. So, we have a minus sign because if we take uh, log we get here minus. So, we have minus signs there and then we have minus sign here, here and here. Okay, so, we get minus sign here and here. So, we get S is minus R ln A p plus 5 by 2 R ln R plus 5 by 2 R ln T plus 5 by 2 R. So, this is S. Now, C p is del Q by del T at constant pressure or we can write C p d t or d q is nothing but c p times d t d q by t is c p d t by t. So, we get t d s is c p d t or c p is del s by del t at constant pressure times t. So, this is how we can calculate C p. So, C p is nothing but t times del s by del t at constant pressure. Now, we have the value of s. So, what we need to do now? We need to uh, differentiate s with respect to temperature keeping pressure constant. So, if we do it, we get del s by del t at constant pressure, the first term from here, first term gives 0, second term also gives 0 and third term gives us 5 by 2 t, 5 r by 2 t. Okay. So, we get del s by del t at constant pressure is 5 r by 2 t. So, C p is t times 5 r by 2 t. So, this gives us C p is 5 by 2 r. So, here what we did, 
uh, from the expression of G, we basically first calculated uh, entropy change, entropy S by differentiating the expression of G with respect to T at constant pressure, which gives us uh, minus S. Once we get S, then uh, we can calculate uh, uh, Cp from uh, del S by del T at constant pressure. The last problem for today's class we have now, we will discuss is starting with E is equals to U plus P V, so that del U by del T at constant pressure is C P minus P del V by del T at constant pressure. This is just a one step problem rather. So, H is U plus P V. So, D H is D U plus P D V plus V D P. So, del H by del T at constant pressure is del U by del T at constant pressure plus P del V by del T at constant pressure and the third term is 0 and del H by del T at constant pressure gives us C P, C P is del U by del T at constant pressure plus P del V by del T at constant pressure. So, we get del U by del T at constant pressure equals to C P minus P times del V by del T at constant pressure. So, this is very, very simple problem and we can really prove it. Thank you.